Hello, this is Dr. Sean Cohen, and welcome to Super Facal Pearls Volume 1. In this session, we'll cover left handed capsulorexis, an observation about Flomax on the iris, angle sinuculasis, and toric lens made accurate. Let's start with left handed capsulorexis. For the left handed surgeon, let's take advantage of the strength of you being left handed. If we place a cystitum on a viscoelastic substance like discobisc, we can use our left handed created paracentesis and then a cystitum with viscoelastic to fill the eye and perform the capsulorexis if partially or completely with a cystitome. Being a right-handed surgeon, I can use both method, methods, but if you can start and, and have the advantage of the left hand, it's a great way to take advantage of the strength of a left-handed surgeon. You can then choose to continue the rexus completely with the cystitome, but because you have a second structure in the eye to stabilize it, you can perform the carat keratome, main wound, with a 2.2 millimeter keratome using the viscoelastic substance to stabilize your eye and the cannula. You can then come out of the eye and perform a left over right handed uh, uh, utrata forceps rexus, or you can use both hands to complete the rexus. Either way, you have many choices in this procedure. A good surgeon is a good observer. Let's take an observation of fluid dynamics in Flomax. The irrigation cannula below the iris plane causes the iris to push up. When it is above the iris plane, the iris flicks down. We're going to come back to that in a future video. Let's see if we can use that observation to our advantage during FACO. For patients with peripheral anterior synechia, the irrigation soft tip is usually sufficient to pull on the peripheral iris closer to its root not too hard to cause bleeding, but hard enough so that you can release most synechiae. You'd be very impressed at how effective this is in removing peripheral anterior synechiae. After we've marked our patient for toric lens, either at the slit lip or at the bedside, the 180 and 0 degree markers are easily identified and referenced to a blood vessel on the cornea, near the cornea. The marker that we can use can either scratch the cornea, create a broad mark, or interfere with visualization. If we have to make a wound at 30 degrees, because we have accurate 0 and 180 marks, we can use a 30 degree marker to identify a blood vessel or some kind of physiologic marker that is more accurate than a blob of ink. If we have to orient the lens at 16 degrees, we still have our 0 and 180 markers and any anatomical vessels nearby to orient ourselves much more accurately than any inking of the cornea can do. So remember that this ring is the best way to mark your patient based on your original landmarks. When you insert the lens, it is now very important to hydrate the wound before you complete your viscoelastic removal. Hydration of the wound is what allows you to make sure that the chamber doesn't shallow and the lens rotate when you remove the viscoelastic. So make your best effort to place the lens in proper position then remove the viscoelastic only after you've done the hydration. That's the tip that I have for you today. When you finally are going to orient your lens, do so with respect to the ring marker so that you'll know by direct visualization on the axis of the marker where your lens is situated. And that way, you have the best precision possible. Thank you for your time and attention. Please visit me on the web at www.supereyecare.com and I look forward to producing volume 2 of Super Fecal Pearls.